I have only ever used two feet. These two feet. Wait, wrong platform. These two feet. Oh, thank you so much. I've been told many times in the comments that I should try other presser feet. Most commonly, um, rufflers? Are they called that? God, you have soft ears. The ones that like ruffle or gather fabric for you while you're sewing. And walking feet. Ow! Okay, bye. But yeah, I'm kind of stuck in my ways. What? A sewist who's stuck in their ways? Who's ever heard of that? I just keep using the basicest of presser feet, the universal one, for everything that I sew, except buttonholes, which is very rare, but I have used the buttonhole foot. And I've kind of realized that the only way I'm gonna get myself to branch out and try something new in this area, also in many, many other areas, is to make a video about it. Ta-da! First I had to procure more feet because I only have five. I didn't even know that I had five until I cleaned my sewing machine a few weeks ago and dumped out this container for possibly the first time. I thought I just had the universal foot and the buttonhole foot, but turns out I've also got a button sewing foot, a zipper foot, and a stitch guide foot? What fun! So on the Singer website and probably in like your average fabric store. They had a nine piece presser foot kit that I assume is all the most popular. I think they said it was all the most popular ones for $80. But I thought, hey, wouldn't it be a lot more fun to buy 42 feet for 20 bucks? Yeah, I cheapskated it, y'all. Because honestly, I don't expect to use most or possibly any of these ever again. But you know how much I love an exploration, so are we going to sit here and figure out how to use every single one of these and then rank which ones I actually deem to be useful? Heck yes we are! Don't worry, I will cut out the boring parts. There's gonna be a lot of silently watching YouTube tutorials. So we have the 42 feet, the five I already owned, and three more. <laughs> Because after buying it, I checked the list on Mr. Cheapy over here and realized that it did not include any of the three feet that are constantly recommended to me. There was no walking foot, no ruffling foot, no gathering foot. So, I just went ahead and got all of those separately, because, you know, thoroughness and stuff. And then yesterday I laid them all out so I could, you know, see which was which be prepared, take photos of each foot, and it proved to be quite a mess already. Y'all, I'm trying to lay out all of these presser feet so that I can take pictures of them. <laughs> and I'm already running into uh, so many snags. This took forever, first of all, just matching all of these up with the list here. But I've run into two specific problems. Those are just the exact same foot. That's a picture of the same thing twice. But here's what I have. Very similar, but ever so slightly different, right there, where these things are located. But which one is which? I don't know, because they just put the same picture twice. Also, these. They're both probably beading feet, but they look slightly different, right? But the round bead foot and the sewing beads foot are extremely similar photos. They both look like this one. Nothing looks like this one. So which one is which? Also, I can already tell just from reading through these names that there's a lot of like uh, the exact same foot in here twice with a slightly different name. For example, here's a zigzag foot and here's a universal presser foot. These are both the same thing. They're the one that comes with a sewing machine. I've also got an overlock foot and an overcast foot. Hmm. This is cracking me up already. This is gonna be fun, y'all. We've also got a couple low shank feet in here. I've got a darning foot low shank and a zipper foot low shank, which correct me if I'm wrong because I might just be wrong here, but from the, the one little thing I've heard, Low shank is just like a type of machine that has a lower shank here, and so you have to get specifically low shank presser feet to fit that machine. So I don't think I'll even be able to use those two, which is fine because they're just low shank repeats of other feet that are already in here. Correcting myself because I was wrong. Did I do research ahead of time? No, of course I didn't do research ahead of time. This isn't that kind of channel. Uh, my machine is a low shank machine, I think, Possibly most machines are nowadays. Uh, so I very much could have used the two low shank presser feet that were included 
in this package. We'll skip over those because I totally didn't know that I could have used them, whoops. Also, there is a shuring foot in here. That's what they call it, a shuring foot. Um, and it looks exactly like the gathering foot. I bet, so. There was a gathering foot in here. They just called it something different. Good times. I mean, this is all just silly little funsies here. I, I am hoping to learn something from this, but there are definitely just so many useless ones and repeats in this mishmash. So let's rank them. My top tier I have titled, like duh. It is reserved solely for universal presser feet also called zigzag presser feet, which I now apparently own at least three of. I'm not even gonna test these. I've been using them for two years. We all know you need this kind of presser foot so you can sew. And theoretically, you don't really need anything else, so it gets its own tier. Next up, we have Keep It Nearby. This is for feet that you might wanna keep in your little sewing machine drawer. They're handy to have around. I'm gonna go ahead and put buttonhole feet in this category, because I've already used those before. You can sew a buttonhole by hand, I guess, but it's, it's pretty dang easy to do it on the machine. The feet are great. Then we have Novelty Grab. This is for any feet that really do make a very specific sewing task easier, but then like how often are you doing that specific task? Below that is who uses this? For feet that I figure out how to use, but I just don't really understand the point of. <laughs> Maybe someone uses it all the time and loves it, but just like, who? And at the bottom we have, what on earth? For feet that I literally can't figure out how to use or just seem completely pointless. And obviously this is just for fun. This is just my opinion. This is coming from somebody who has only ever used two feet. So if I hate on your favorite foot, don't come for me. <laughs> Let us try a few. And then I'm gonna pause and run to Joanne, assuming it still exists, because I'm pretty sure there's some supplies that I'm gonna need for this that I don't have. Like, y'all, there's a fringe foot. A foot specifically for fringe? Okay. I've got my scrap bins. I have very loud thread in here so we can see. Let's start with the ones that came with this machine. The stitch guide foot which my cheapy package did have a version of as well. They look a little different than each other. Ooh, sliding bar. <laughs> this is just so you get a really straight stitch with like a really even seam allowance. Don't be a problem child right off the bat. I mean, honestly, I think when it comes to like using different presser feet, the number one reason most of us don't is we're just too lazy to change it. Heck, half the time I'm too lazy to change my needle. So we're sewing two pieces together, right side to right side. We want a perfect half inch seam allowance. I mean, that's a real perfect seam allowance. Here's the thing. As someone who is usually self-drafting my clothing and therefore my seam allowances are quite often not perfect. <laughs> and I'm also just kind of bad at sewing straight lines. I kind of want to leave this foot on here forever. We're off to a grand start. I already said I can't put it in like, duh, but it's going and keep it nearby. And um, come next video, you might be noticing this guy just living on my machine. Cool, one down. Next up in the, this came with the machine category, but I also got one in the cheap kit is the sewing on a button foot. Never used that. Sewing on a button by hand is so quick and easy. I expect this to work, but is it worthwhile enough to like change out your presser foot and everything when you could just sew it on by hand? It's not that hard to sew on a button by hand. I do have to look up how these work though, because I have no idea. You just snap it on. Obviously, I didn't mean like that. Thank you, though. The machine's feed must be disengaged so the stitches sew in place. If the machine has what? a What? I don't think I have a feed dog lowering thing. Also, why are they called feed dogs? Cracks me up every time. It's a hilarious name. Can you do any size? Okay. So they just say to like... To do it by hand the first time. So you make sure it actually goes in the hole. Oh, like that did not work. See, this is my thing lining this up and making sure that the stitch you're doing is gonna perfectly go in the holes just seems like 
it would take a long time. And even if you're doing a lot of buttons, you have to sit here and like perfectly line it up on every single one. You could just hand sew them on, just saying. This still makes me nervous. I feel like I'm gonna hit the button, but it shouldn't. Okay, it definitely worked. I don't know, I feel like this is a numbers game. Maybe if I was sewing on like 50 buttons down the back of a dress, but y'all, anytime you see like a ton of buttons, they're usually the, are they called like shank buttons? The ones that have the little loop on the bottom rather than the ones that have holes in the top. Like they're usually covered buttons and they're pretty and this wouldn't work for that. So because it does its job as it says it does and it does it well, I'm gonna put this in novelty grab, but it's kind of one where I'm like, it just, just hand sewing with a needle and thread is uh, not that hard. All right, last of the ones that came with the machine also came in the cheap package. So I now have two and they look exactly the same. Zipper foot. Y'all, I complain about sewing on zippers a lot on this channel, but I've also never used a zipper foot. So if I used the tool that was made for doing the thing I hate doing, would I like doing it? It's a possibility. Who wants to get sewn on pointlessly? You're a weird color and I like that. All right. Let's assume I'm putting a zip. This is the worst fabric. Get a better fabric. So theoretically, this is just allowing me to like get closer. I'll be honest, it's pretty clean, but I also feel like I kind of get that same result from a normal presser foot. And then you can also top stitch. Okay, I admit it, that's a very nice looking zipper. If you imagine that in like proper thread colors. The reality is that this doesn't make sewing on zippers easier for me. Like the things that make it hard for me, this isn't necessarily fixing, but this would absolutely give me way cleaner looking zippers when I dare to sew them on. I should use it. So for that reason, it is going in Keep it nearby. Let's try the walking foot, also called an even feed foot. Look at this big boy. What on earth is happening here? I do not know. Making sure its extension arm fits on the needle clamp. Huh? I'm already lost. Do I have to remove that whole thing? Oh, I do. But also, what? You gotta take your machine apart for this one. Good heavens. That's very dramatic. You just have to unscrew one thing. Okay, so you're supposed to take this off. This lever has to go on top of your needle thingy. And then like that. This thing is already going down the rankings just because I've had to unscrew and screw something in. Like, let's be honest. This is my screwing face. Okay, it's attached. What a chunk. Oh, look at it doing its job. Okay, so then you just sew, right? Is that the whole, the whole Jimmy Jim? I cannot decide if I like that sound or not. Uh, I don't know, there was a clickety clackety to it that felt very like old school. This mostly got recommended to me when I was sewing on the stretch velvet stuff for my Snow Queen gown and it was being a little problem child. So let me grab some scraps of that. Okay, no need to be giant. So the nap on like the stretch velvet makes it really hard to sew stuff together because it like pushes against each other and slides around. And people said, oh, use a walking foot it will keep the two layers where they're supposed to be and there will be less or no shifting. So let's try it. So that was a pretty delightful experience. I think there's still a bit of polling in there, but like I remember what it was like last time and this was not nearly as bad. That is absolutely worlds different. 
Okay, here's the thing. I don't really know what the main purpose of this is. I think it's a big thing for quilters. I think I would only ever use this again if I'm making an entire garment out of something like a stretch velvet. So I'm gonna put it in novelty grab because you have to unscrew something and screw it back in and like, I'm not doing that on a whim. But did it perform? Yeah. It performed. Okay, moving on to the ruffler. Like what on earth? Now I, I've seen a video of one of these operating, so I do get it, kinda. This is another where you have to take off the thingy. So we have to screw this on here. Hello, small boy. And this is like that. Good heavens. The cool thing here is that there's so many options for adjustability. You can change up here how often it ruffles, every 12 stitches, six stitches, or one stitch. But then if you change the stitch length on your machine, that's gonna affect things. Like a four versus a one is gonna make a difference. And then you can also change with the little knob here how much fabric it's pushing under. <laughs> that immediately scared me. Something seems wrong. <laughs> Should I start with a better fabric? That doesn't sound right. What am I doing wrong? Why are you being so persnickety? 2,000 years later. So what I have just learned is that it is working without fabric. So now I just need you to work with fabric. Let's see what happens at a shorter stitch length. Okay. Hi, bud, you're so beautiful. Oh, we have a pleat. Okay, bam, it happened. So I was told to put the fabric around this little bar here. Um, and when I did that, it was not actually catching the fabric and pleating it. And then I just saw another video where he just put it on top of the whole thing, just slid it in between here, but didn't worry about that bar. And that's what I just did and it worked now. Okay, let's have some fun. I will say I don't love the sound it makes. Again, when things make extra noise, I just assume something is wrong. Okay, we gotta try the one now. Okay, the one is scary. It's stacked those pleats and there's just a mess of thread on the back. I wish there was an in between six and one because one is so extreme, but six was still pretty like pleat looking. I feel like there should be a three, like three would be a great in between there. So you can also gather one piece of fabric or kind of pleat it while simultaneously sewing it on to a non gathered piece of fabric. Okay, I feel like we're sewing in one place now. That is technically what it was supposed to do. <sighs> I wanted to like this more. The more moving parts something has, the more chance there is of it glitching. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it was great and simple and easy, but then Sometimes it was just kind of a mess with wads of thread on the back. Like this one's super nice and clean, but it's also really hard to guide the fabric straight. You have to make sure you have a chunk of fabric that you're not gonna need on the front side because otherwise you can't feed it in there. There's just a lot of like, mm, moments with it. So I'm kind of torn. I was gonna put this in novelty grab, but based off of that trial, I personally just think that other options look better. So you know what? Y'all can fight me in the comments, but I'm putting this in who uses this. So I would go to the gathering foot next, but because it's also called a shirring foot and I think you can do shirring with it, I wanna wait and get some Shuring elastic at Joanne, because I don't have that. You know what? Let's try this, this Jaguar 
thing. What's up with that? There's a plastic part on the front of the foot. Otherwise, it seems pretty normal. All-purpose zigzag foot Jaguar. Is that a brand of sewing machine? Oh, it is. Okay, I literally can't find an English language explanation of what makes the Jaguar universal foot interesting. I mainly wanted to know why is there a plastic piece with a hole in it in the front. And then I thought, hey, let me actually read the, the thing that came with the thing, the thing that came with the thing. <laughs> Words are doing well today. And it says opening in front portion of the foot to guide small trim, elastic, or heavy decorative threads. So like, let's say I was ziggity zagging. I mean, that works. Stayed very guided. I just don't know if you really need that on your universal foot, you know? It's going in who uses this. I think as universal feet go, the simpler one is better. Sorry, Jaguar. Oh, back to zippers. <sighs> invisible zipper foot and plastic invisible zipper foot. Come back to me, zippers. It's your time to shine. Let's start with the metal one. What makes you special? Into the groove. Mm. Okay, so what I'm gathering here is that unlike a regular zipper foot where you're just trying to get as close to the little lumpy teeth as possible, with the invisible zipper foot there's actually a notch in the foot that you put that lump into, which does seem very helpful to me. Is that how it works? Or am I supposed to unroll it first? It fit over that, so... Okay, let's try it. Oh yeah, it's kind of forcing it to unroll as it goes. Oh ho ho. Look at things working as though, you know, they were made to work. Yeah, so I can't even see the stitches. The regular zipper foot, I was like, oh yeah, it just kind of makes it cleaner. Good for that, but like, it's not that much better. This one straight up saves your butt. <laughs> that makes sewing on an invisible zipper so much easier. It's going and keep it nearby, y'all. I need to start using these when I put in zippers. But what about the plastic one? Oh, well that's already... Oh, I put it on backwards. Okay. Operator error. <laughs> That's on me, kiddos. Y'all, why did I like that better? I have never sewn an invisible zipper that looks that good. Where is it? Can you see it? No, because it's been properly sewn on. I gotta start using these. All right, this is also going and keep it nearby. I cannot explain why I slightly preferred using the plastic one. I do not know, but I actually did prefer it. So if this one is cheaper, if you buy it on its own or something, yeah, go for it. Next. Okay, here's an interesting one. Straight stitch foot. The little note here says that this presser foot will help you not get puckering on lightweight fabrics, which is something I experienced recently with this fabric on my giant pants. There was some puckering in the seams. Does what it says. So the thing with this is you can't use a zigzag stitch with it. You can only do a straight stitch, but because it has feet on either side, it's pressing the fabric down and it's not giving it any room to pucker or shift around. Yeah, that's a real clean seam, y'all. Keep it nearby. I'm gonna keep it nearby. Honestly, y'all, I was fully prepared to put most of them in like who uses this or what on earth. Maybe I'm learning something about myself <laughs> in this experiment. You should be open to new things. Maybe stuff works when people say it'll work. I don't know, we have a lot to go. There could still be some stupidity in here. But I'm gonna pause, eat some lunch, go to Joanne, and I'll be back. Y'all, I don't know what other people's Joannes are like, but 
Mine was totally normal, although the only color of shirring elastic I could find is red, so they were very low on that. But okay, I've got shirring elastic, so let's move on to the gathering slash shirring foot. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's what I thought. Um, I paid $15 for just the gathering foot that I already owned. <laughs> if you want to get some specific presser feet that you've been wanting to try, it is honestly probably a lot cheaper to just get a massive collection of ones that you don't need than to buy each one separately. Sorry, singer. <laughs> nah, dang it. This is another remove the thingy. I hate this tiny screwdriver. Ah, yeah, goes on like that. Do you just wanna watch a woman's frustration with a weird ass screwdriver mount? So if you're using it to gather fabric, you just use normal thread and theoretically, you're just supposed to sew. That did a very light gather. What happens if I change my stitch length? Longer stitch length equals more gathering. Yeah, so then I saw in a video, uh, the girl said if you kind of just hold the fabric behind the presser foot, it'll gather even tighter. Look at all of that. My only thing with the gathering foot is usually when I'm gathering material, I have a very specific length that needs to fit a specific length. So the amount that I need something gathered is very specific. Yeah. Whereas this is just kind of going at it. <laughs> what about shirring? You don't need a shirring foot to do shirring. So I'm a little confused. I've also never done shirring before at all. So I think what I'll do is I'll try it on this one first and then I'll stick a universal foot on here and try it again and see if there's a difference between the two. Dazzle me, wonder boy. Well, it doesn't look great. Ugh. Did I just do this wrong? Cause this is not good. Question. Do I just not know how to do shirring? <laughs> I thought I did. Okay, I did exactly what it said to do for shirring. So I'm gonna chalk this up to operator error. Uh, but regardless, the gathering thing was cool, but not something I would use all the time. So this is going in novelty grab. Okay, here's some that uh, theoretically are not anything different. This one is called an open toe foot and this one is called a large opening presser foot. Basically with both of these, they just say, this makes it easier to see your stitches cause there's space. Yeah, I can see where I'm gonna stitch for sure. I kinda like it better. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I kinda prefer the uh, the open view of what my fabric is doing. I made a weird leaf. What about the even bigger one? This guy is a chunk. So it did say that this one also works well for going over like thicker stuff, like ribbon and everything. God, he's a big boy. This just looks so funny on here. I do think this would be very opposite, obviously, of the one, what was it? The straight stitch one that was supposed to help with puckering. This has nothing to press down on that fabric. So I think this would not be very good to use on like a lighter, slipperier fabric. I mean, I don't know. I did genuinely just enjoy using both of these, but at the same time, I'm kind of thinking who uses these? This definitely feels more like people who do decorative stitching use these. So no shade to those people, but I'm putting these on who uses this? Edge joining foot. That's you. I'm gonna look this one up. The edge stitch foot is the only way to get this look effortlessly. Okay, I get the gist. So it can kind of just be a stitch guide, but then it can also be used as a stitch in the ditch. Y'all. Why did I come to this experiment not expecting to be constantly impressed? Like my stitch in the ditch, 
is not very good. This is like perfection or pretty close to it. This one allows you to do zigzag or any other form of decorative stitches. Oh, this is fun. I mean, I didn't need this foot to do this stitching. This just has that blade and it's not down in the fabric. It's just sitting at surface level, but it allows you to guide with the center of the foot in a way that other feet maybe don't. I would honestly say like, who uses this if it was just for a clean straight stitch on the edge. Like the stitch guide already does that for us. However, having that central blade to go between your two fabrics to go in the ditch moves this up to novelty grab. I might have to grab this one. Okay, let's look at some knit fabrics. This is a knit foot. This foot helps with puckering. So it has a little lever that touches the needle bar and does something. Like I get it, I don't fully get it, but I get it. Other than the noise that it's making, it doesn't feel any different, <sighs> but my fabric is completely unpuckered. It does what it says it'll do. And here's the thing, I don't have to unscrew anything to attach this like I did for the walking foot. So y'all, I'm gonna keep it nearby. I sew with a lot of knit fabric. So the roller foot, y'all. I just tried the roller foot and every time I started to sew, my machine would jam on like the second or third stitch. And I just full on blamed the foot. I was like, well, this guy's going in the lowest tier cause Clearly he just makes my machine jam, all his fault. Uh, but then I had the, the foresight to try a regular presser foot and my machine still jammed. I was full on like taking it apart, freaking out. I've never had a problem with my sewing machine before. And then I looked up what's causing my sewing machine to jam. And it was like, well, there's a lot of things, but like, is your machine threaded the right way? And I was like, how dare you even ask? Of course it is. the machine was not threaded right. <laughs> I don't know how it happened, but at some point the thread came out of this thing and that's what was causing all of the problems. I'm sorry I blamed you. He gets a redo. Here we go. Roller foot. Let's try terry cloth because I had some trouble with terry cloth. Look at her go. Eh, still kind of stretching and puckering. I gave you a second chance. Are you gonna mess it up? I liked the knit foot better. I don't know, because this one is so wide, like I'm sure there's different kinds of roller feet, but this one, the roller is in the front and it's quite a wide foot. So if you're trying to sew like near the edge of something, I feel like this is just gonna, like the roller itself is gonna make it go crooked or push it off to one side. I kind of want to put it back in what on earth. <laughs> but now it's your fault. No, you know, it does partially work. So I'm gonna put it in who uses this. As far as stretchy, slippery fabrics go, I think the walking foot and the knit foot both did a better job at fixing that than this one did. Okay, I'm gonna grab the darning foot cause it's huge. It's like a free motion foot. The foot itself goes up and down as you're sewing. So you can move the fabric any direction you want. And it's really for like decorative stitching, quilting and stuff like that. So theoretically, I can just plunk and go in any direction I want. Ooh. So that's pretty fun. I will say because my bobbin thread is a drastically different color, you can see how often it gets pulled to the front and like, I don't know if that's supposed to happen, but that might be a um, like a tension error, operator error. At this point, I'm kind of thinking I should retitle who uses this to um, quilters use this. <laughs> like I'm definitely approaching this from a garment sewist 
perspective and I'm like, that's fun, but when would I use that? Yeah, same with a lot of the ones that, like the open toe one and stuff, I'm like, eh, when would I need this? Who uses it, right? Well, the answer is people who do decorative stitches on a machine, ah, aka quilters. And therefore, as a garment sewist, you probably don't need to go investing in it, you know? But it is fun. This is the other giant one that's still left over there. Where are you. Oh, right there. Adjustable bias tape binder foot. Wasn't there like an Instagram hack that I tried that was basically this same thing and everybody was like, you know, you can just get a foot for that. Well, here we go. I'm gonna need an explanation of this one. That was a very quick explanation. By the way, y'all, I'm not gonna link every single video I watch to tell me things in the uh, description here, but literally just type into Google how to use name of the presser foot. Some delightful person has made a video on it. Probably multiple people. So you slide your bias tape in. Okay. You put your piece of fabric in between. How'd we do? Here's the thing for garment construction though. I feel like the most common use of bias binding is around curves, whether it's a neckline, an armhole, a circle skirt, hem. And I don't know that this is a great way to put bias tape on a curve because you're sewing down both sides at once. And therefore, it's going in. Who uses this? Quilters. Not one I'm probably gonna be pulling out much. Here we have a blind stitch foot. You will need to press a double fold hem, which is then folded back on itself. What? I'm gonna do some ironing for this one. Wow! So it looks like that. And on the front of the fabric, ooh. So that was really successful. Like you can barely see the bits of orange and green sticking out. And if that was matching the fabric, all the more so. I think my thing with blind hems is they're not something I would do a lot in general. Very cool though. I'm gonna put it in novelty grab. Okay, here are two that are fascinating to me. They call these pin tuck. Feet. One of them is a five groove and one of them is a nine groove, I believe. Oh, I need a double needle for these. It's a good thing I anticipated that happening and bought one. So now I have to look up how to use a double needle. We're learning all the things today. Do you want to come here? Yeah. Do you want to come here? You can come here. Hello. Oh my goodness. You have very stabby paws. Twin needle. We've done it. These are not pin tucks as I think of pin tucks because possibly I'm not actually aware of what pin tucks are. But these appear to be just like very small little bloops of fabric. So then the point of the grooves on the foot is that you can put rows of these pin tucks together by putting the last one that you made in the next groove over. This is actually fascinating to me because I'm pretty sure I have like sweatpants that have this down like the front of them as decorative detail. And I've always been like, how do you get that? This is it. Also, it looks really cool on the back. I really want to do something with this in it though. Wouldn't this look cool on like a cuff? This is giving me ideas. All that being said, it is definitely a novelty grab. It's a decorative element. There's no, you know, day-to-day -day reason to need a pin tuck foot. Okay, let's do the, um, the two that are potentially the same foot. An overcast foot and an overlock foot. It literally says in the description, the overlock foot has many names. It is also called the overcast foot. You mean like the other one you put in this collection? Well, sneakies. What? How is this unique? Are you any different? It still has the blade, but not like a real blade like a serger has. So it's not trimming off your fabric for you. It's just guiding it. So that looks basically the same as the other one. But here's my question. If I use this exact same stitch with a universal foot, is it really any different? 
No, it's not. <laughs> yeah, so tell me if there's something more special about these feet than just having a little guide. Because yeah, it's easier to guide it with a guide, but like, am I really gonna pay separately for a foot when I could just guide the fabric myself and get the exact same results? Or use like the stitch guide one that I have? I don't know. So I'm a little disappointed in these and I'm gonna be a little salty about it and put them in what on earth? Be cooler. This guy is called a double welting foot. I have no idea what that even means. The double welt cord foot is used to make trim. Okay. So you just wanna make sure that they're lined up in those grooves. Fascinating. This is real specific. It seems like it's a thing more for upholstery. It's basically like a way to create piping. But then you can do double piping. I don't know that I've ever seen double piping on something. <laughs> I will say that was very easy. So points for that. Cool, I guess? I don't know, y'all. Again, I just don't think I've ever seen double piping on anything. So I'm a little bit like, why? Uh, I'm tempted to put this in who uses this. I'm gonna have to do it. Who uses this? This guy is called a brighting foot. <laughs> Not really, it's a braiding foot, but they misspelled it twice. So basically there's just a hole in the front so you can feed whatever you're sewing through that hole and keep it really straight. Ow. That's sewn on straight down the middle. Who uses this? <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I feel like who uses this is coming across as an insult. It's not an insult, it's just like, even more novelty than novelty. The fringe foot. Uh, I took the time to look it up and realized that you don't need fringe for the fringe foot. It's not for sewing fringe on, it makes fringe. That's fun. And very, very specific. So with this, you do a zigzag. You gotta make sure it doesn't hit the middle bar. How do you get this off? Oh. It's just because it was too piled up. Oh, it didn't like that. And let's be real, I fully expected it. So theoretically I can cut or pull out the bobbin thread, which is all of the orange. And on the front, I'll have fringe. <laughs> okay, look, I recognize that there is operator error here that this is largely me being bad at it. But I watched a video of a girl doing it who knew what she was doing and my reaction to her finished product was still... Why? It's going in what on earth? Cause... What on earth? Oh y'all, we are getting there. It's... It's sparsing out over here. And we have four feet here that are almost exactly the same. Eighth inch round hammer foot, hammer foot. That's, that's a separate thing. It's just a hammer foot. Three millimeter roll of lace presser foot. And then there's a six millimeter roll of lace presser foot. I don't feel like I'll need to try each one. You know, how unique can you be? Theoretically, this is like a baby hem and it's doing it for you or a rolled hem, which I'd love that. <sighs> You have to like into the little rolly part and then you start sewing and it's like, no, thank you. Uh, so I kind of got it here at the end. Uh, n not so much before that. It's persnickety. I mean, I just kind of wanted it to do better. <laughs> I'm gonna try another one though and see if it's any different. It doesn't look any different. Okay, so this one did significantly better-ish. All right, fine, I'll put all four of them in novelty grab as one little stack. Open toe embroidery foot. This is the exact thing I already did. I already did an open toe foot. This one is just plastic. The clear plastic makes it even better for visibility. Okay, let's do a cool stitch. Wow, I can see so much. Who uses this? Applique foot. Why do you not fit my machine? This gets a what on earth for being 
basically the right size, but just the teeny tiniest bit too small to actually clip onto my machine. What on earth? Fourth inch quilting foot. Should be called piecing foot. Then why didn't you call it that? Why do I have a feeling that this one's gonna make me ask who uses this? And then answer myself, quilters. Wide or two narrow seams. You'll... Wait, what? Quarter inch quilting foot with edge. So I have one with an edge and one without an edge. God, it's so specific. <laughs> it's just to get a very nice quarter inch seam. Isn't that what the stitch guide one was for? Like, aren't there other feet that did this exact same thing? I think what I'm coming to realize with these feet is that people were like, oh, I have this very, very specific need. And whoever makes presser feet was like, I will fulfill that need with a very, very specific presser foot. But then there's also like general presser feet that are like, hey, we'll fulfill a lot of needs all at one time. Yep, that's a perfectly fourth inch seam. That's a perfect fourth inch seam. Who uses this? Next, satin stitch foot. What I'm getting from this is the only thing different about this is there's like a slight lift in the center so that as you're doing a lot of really tight stitches, it's not pressing down on those and it's not gonna get stuck on those. And then there's also like a scalloped option. I don't know that a regular presser foot would get stuck doing this. Kinda wanna try now. Yeah, so my regular universal presser foot did not get stuck on that at all. Maybe that happens more if you're using like a thread with some texture to it, a metallic thread or something like that. But that makes this so specific of a need that I have to put it in what on earth. Why are you so specific? All right, so the next three that I have are all cording feet. The first one being just a cording foot, and then the other two are five holes and seven holes. I do not know what any of this means. Let me look it up. Do you ever feel like you've learned too much in too short a period of time? Because that's where I'm starting to be right now. <laughs> oh, okay, so the one that they just called a cording foot is actually a three hole cording foot. With metallic thread, you want to Okay, all of these are making me want to do more like decorative elements. I tend to be a pretty plain and simple gal. I don't even use like trim or anything much on my clothing, but this is making me want to experiment. I'm just gonna use embroidery floss for this. I mean, on the five and the seven, you have literal holes. So like you can't use much more than and thread on there. But on the three, you have a little lever that you can kind of push up. So you could potentially use something thicker there. So you can just kind of pop each one in. That's cool. Potentially the reason that I look at stuff like this and I'm always like, oh, okay. It's not that I'm not astounded by it. It's just that like, it doesn't immediately stand out to me. But I think again, that comes from me already being an embroidery artist. Like I look at this and I'm like, oh yeah, okay. That's just couching. Like I could just do that myself. But in all fairness, it would take way, way longer. <laughs> These holes are so tiny. I don't know how you can get anything through here that is not like sewing thread. There's some very thin metallic thread. Will you go in there? Yeah, but dude, do you really wanna do that seven times? Ugh. Ugh. All right, that took me about um, 10 seconds to go nope. The cording foot or the three hole cording foot? Novelty grab. The five and the seven hole cording foot where you have to actually thread needle sized holes. Like every single one of these holes is like threading a needle. I'm sure there's some really artistic, cool looking thing that people can do with this, but I would have to ask, have you ever just tried embroidery? <laughs> so these are both going in what on earth? Y'all last two. They are both beading feet. The sewing beads presser foot and the round bead 
presser foot. Um, here's the thing. I was gonna go buy like a string of beads at Joanne, but I forgot to put it on my actual list and therefore I forgot to buy it. Those are what my two feet look like. They're just for different sizes of beads. You've attached a string of beads. That was so, like, weirdly condescending. You've attached a string of beads. Well, you know what? Just to, to say I've tried them, because they're not anything crazy complicated or unique. They just have really deep grooves on the bottom. They're more like a sled. Yeah, they're more like a sled instead of a toboggan. That makes sense. So then they can go over the height of your beads. I'm just gonna sew some cord on. Oh God, this is bringing back memories, y'all. I bought this for a very specific project I was gonna do and I still have not done that project. Yeah, so both of these are basically like, hey, if you're ever sewing on something super thick, so you need some height in your presser foot, bam. And that is so specific that you know where they're gonna go. Ugh. Who uses this? Ho y'all. And with that, we're done. We got through all the presser feet. I mean, honestly, this is more spread out than I expected. There are a lot more in Keep It Nearby than I expected. Like, honestly, I was kind of, you know, I came in very, Skeptical. A lot of them did end up in who uses this and I feel like I was really snarky about this But ultimately here's why it's because these are a product that's being sold to you And like I said when I bought them separately, they were like $15 each that adds up real fast and one thing that a lot of people ask especially when they're at the beginning is like what tools are really necessary to sew? A lot of people are on a budget and there are just so many sewing tools that are being sold to you once you get into this area. So I really wanted to test these to kind of show that like, they're cool. They all do what they say they're supposed to do pretty much. But I think I'm so snarky about it sometimes because none of these are necessary other than like, your universal one that should come with your machine. I mean, my machine came with five and I had only used two for over two years of sewing. You do not need to run out and buy any of these. You can absolutely make it without them. And as your budget allows, or as you've been sewing for a long time, as you run into very specific problems, that's when you can go out and get yourself the specific presser foot that is gonna be helpful to you. Or, cause y'all we love, being cheapskates sometimes, you can go on Amazon and just buy 42 for the price of one or two. I don't normally like to like recommend shopping on Amazon. Not that I don't do it, I just don't like to like recommend it, but this is one case where I'm like, $15 for this foot, what's 42 into 20? Do the math while you're editing for this foot and they're the same foot. Yeah, that was fun. This is an exploration I've been wanting to do for a while. Now that I have been sewing for a few years, now that my budget allows for me to buy some more tools, these are really fun things to explore and I'm excited to start using a few of them. I had fun, I hope you had fun. I learned a few things. I hope you learned a few things. I'll see you next week. I can't figure this one out. There's a joke in there somewhere about how I already have walking feet, but they prefer sitting. Huh? Nope, you're a mess. <gasps> Everything's fine. So because it doesn't jaw, what are you doing? <laughs> Just go for it. I'm gonna look up how to use it. Ugh. I gotta stop stepping on that. This is gonna take a while. So is this. What? So is this. Yeah. Good times all around. Just...